Right, so he's gone out uh, to render an apology to the president and to the people of Ghana and to people of the northern region and to the people of his own constituency. But the member of parliament for Nanto is still in trouble. This is because we're told that some traditional rulers in the region are thinking of dragging him before them uh, to substantiate some allegations he made. Now, when he spoke to uh, Diamond FM in that uh, part of the country, it generated controversy. Let's listen to some experts, except of what he said. It is pathetic, absolutely pathetic. It's unethical. It's so funny, it's so stupid, it's so silly, it's nasty. It's an Islamic. For people to be sitting down the same party, and their intention is about how they can get someone out of parliament. I have an impeccable academic record. Mm. Impeccable. If they are so jealous, that is their problem. These people are so subsumed that people come and give them filthy money. Filthy money. ill gotten money. And they will shut up. Because they give them money. When I begin to speak out, I have nothing to lose. That was the voice of uh, Mutala uh, Mohammed, the member of parliament for uh, Nanton, also the deputy minister of trade and industry. Let's go there and speak to Dr. Al Hussein Zakaria. He is a representative of the uh, Tamale chief imam and is just uh, joining us online. Dr. Zakaria, uh, grateful to have you tonight. Hello, Dr. Zakaria. Well, some religious uh, leaders are uh, there uh, thinking of dragging uh, the Deputy Minister of Trade and Member of Parliament for Nanton, uh, Mutala Mohammed, uh, uh, for uh, allegations he, uh, he made against them when he granted that interview to Diamond FM. Dr. Al Hussein Zakaria is a representative of the Tamale Chief Imam and he's just joined me on phone. Dr. Zakaria, grateful to have you tonight. Thank you very much. Mm. So, uh, uh, first of all, uh, let's uh, look at what happened. Uh, uh, indeed, our traditional rulers are uh, <laughs> contemplating on, on dragging the member of parliament for Nanton before them to substantiate the allegations he made on, on uh, uh, the radio station. Well, uh, this, this matter is a little bit unclear for many people because this is a statement uh, that was made without particular reference to any particular person or person. But the general statement somehow rather caused uh, some discomfort among some Muslim uh, leaders who had about. So it, it, this is the extent that we are holding the matter. Mm. It oh. is not directly uh, against any particular individual or group. What, what particular discomfort are you talking about? Hello? I'm asking that what particular discomfort uh, are you talking about? Yeah, we're talking about the general sense in which the, the, the statement was made as if, as if, as if the uh, Muslim leaders or traditional leaders uh, had any uh, grudge with, 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 with the minister. Right. So that uh, it, 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 since nobody was particularly mentioned, it looks like it, it was disrespect to the authority and the Muslim leadership. So uh, will he be invited to, to appear before uh, uh, religious leaders? Again, again, uh, the line is not too good. Right. Let's try and see if the lines will be better now. But I was asking if, uh, because of that, uh, the member of parliament for Nanton uh, is going to be invited to appear before uh, you and explain uh, perhaps some of the few things that he said there. Yeah. The, the, what, what, what I, I heard is that. Um, there have been attempts to uh, reach the Muslim leadership and those who are affected with an apology, an open apology. And I think that is the extent the matter has reached. It hasn't gone anywhere beyond that. And uh, once there is a misunderstanding and one party is 
a story about it. I think usually it will be taken seriously and that ends it. So uh, all you are demanding is an apology? Yeah, the, the apology and the apology has already been 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 been, been, been. Because even before it was demanded, the, the apology had come come to all those who were affected in one way or the other uh, by the statement. So uh, you are saying that the the apology, the public apology, he 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 gave. Uh, should be accepted by uh, the people there, the Muslim media and the people of Nanton uh, constituency. In my view, that is right, because uh, the, 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 the case is blamable based on the fact that, you know, it was a general statement. Nobody in particular was mentioned by name, right? So uh, the apology comes that way, that same way to all those who think they have been affected negatively in one way or the other by this statement. So we, I don't expect that anybody is going to demand anything beyond that. Let, 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 let me uh, clarify this to my viewers. So, uh, Dr. Zakaria, you're saying that uh, the Muslim leaders there, one, are not demanding uh, an explanation from uh, the member of parliament for Nanton. They're not demanding anything, and that they have accepted the, uh, the public apology that he issued uh, through the media. That's right. Dr. Afusin Zakaria, a representative of the Tamale Chief Imam, grateful to have you speak to us uh, tonight, uh, talking to us uh, from... Uh, Tamale in the northern uh, region. Right, so let's stay on the big one because we're dealing with issues of politics. The caucus of political party chairpersons are talking about uh, the next chairman of the electoral commission. Now, we are saying that they are against uh, some names being peddled in the media as a likely replacement for the uh, outgoing chairman of the electoral commission. Now, the caucus is of the view that uh, integrity should be the main determining factor in appointing a new chairman for the commission. Let's listen to them. Dr. Farijan retires in June. The debate as to who becomes the next EC boss bridges on. Several names have been peddled in the media as the next successor to the electoral commission chairman. Justice Jamapa, the chairman of the presidential World Cup Commission, Dr. Emmanuel Akwete, Executive Director of the Institute for Democratic Governance, Sule Amadou, Deputy Chairman of the Electoral Commission, and Georgina Opoku-Amankwa, the current Deputy Commissioner in charge of administration at the EC. We think that it's, 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 it's not the best for us now, for our country. Speculation. Uh, speculation. That's right. And building up emotions in people and to begin to divide the opinions of people. This is my man. If it's not chosen by the president, then I must resist it. Who are my partners in this resistance movement? We're trying to build a consensus. The chairman of the New Patriotic Party also expressed the party's concern on who becomes the next chairman of the Electoral Commission. You can tell what happened after the last elections. We don't want to repeat. We don't want to have to question the Electoral Commission and its integrity, etc., etc. The 1992 Constitution mandates the President, in consultation with the Council of State, to appoint the EC Chairman. Samia Nkrumah, Chairwoman of the Convention People's Party, was confident a woman could do the job. I think everybody knows that uh, what a man can do, a woman can do even better. We are careful not to limit the debate to personalities at this point. You know, we as political leaders, as political parties in general, we want to make sure that our democracy continues to deliver stability and peace. The caucus of party chairmen is under the umbrella of the Ghana Political Party's program. The chairman meets monthly to discuss programs and policies that affect political parties and have been doing so since 2002. The four major parties 
with representation in Parliament, the National Democratic Congress, the New Patriotic Party, the Convention People's Party, and the People's National Convention were represented by their chairpersons. Um, the chairman um, of the caucus was, was, was clearly not too happy about the speculations that are going on and also about the names that have been, you know, uh, mentioned and uh, in the media and all that because if you do that then you are tying the hands of, of, of the president. Whoever is appointed as the next EC chair, all parties agree integrity should and must be the extra factor to win the confidence of Ghanaians. Right, so uh, some uh, chairpersons of political parties, some political parties were told with representation in parliament there, talking about the DUC term. But uh, let's make some sense out of what uh, they've been talking about. Let's speak to Dr. Evans uh, Agri uh, Dako. Uh, he is a senior uh, political science lecturer at the political science department of the University of Ghana. He's here joining me on the phone. Dr. Agri, uh, grateful uh, for you uh, staying there for us tonight. Uh, but let's first of all check this. Now, some have raised concerns that these uh, uh, chairpersons of political parties are trying to stampede the presidency into who he chooses as the next chairman of the Electoral Commission. What do you think? Uh, can I come again? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm saying that some have raised the concern that these chairpersons of political parties are trying to stampede the presidency in, in, into choosing who becomes the next chairman of the Electoral Commission. What do you think? Oh, well, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, indeed, the viewers. Um, we are open to democracy, and we call democracy, uh, normally we say that it's all matter, right? That it's all matter. Uh, we are all actors within the system. Chairman of the various political parties are critical actors. Of course, we see that in the democracy, political parties are ubiquitous. And that's because they nurture all of us. Um, and to find you know, citizens uh, to participate effectively in the political process. Um, over the years, the Constitution has clearly specified you know, how the UC chairman might be appointed and so on. Um, of course, we all know that constitutions or constitution must be a living document in the sense that it has to, at any point in time, serve the interests of the people. So if people think that, and that is why within the Constitution we have the amendment procedures. Because there may be times that you may think that some of the provisions may not be near to the benefit of the court masses of the people, and therefore there will be a need for some re you know, readjustment and reapportionment and so on and so forth. And so on and so forth. So um, I think the thing is that um, can we go beyond the constitutional or behind the constitutional provisions now? No, uh, we can't. But you see, the president is empowered to nominate that person. Um, and then, of course, some consultation, council of state, and so on and so forth. Uh, the president, within the constitutional you know, provision, can can do wide range of consultations. You understand? So that there will be some consensus around the, the person who, who becomes the EC chairman ultimately. I don't think that is a trade compete. Perhaps one of the key issues is be that uh, uh, maybe the existing arrangement, the status quo, perhaps is not. Is no longer popular, and therefore, going forward, as a people, we may have to look for other innovative ways by which we can, uh, you know, uh, appoint or elect or whoever. I mean, this very important, uh, you know, office holder within our democratic system. Yes. So I don't think it's competing. Maybe we just drawing the attention to the fact that, as I indicated, that um, this is something that probably is not too popular, and therefore, we must look for ways of uh, appointing the person. Yes. Dr. Agri, the, the Constitution is explicit on this. Uh, the, the president, uh, in consultation with the Council of State, should do this. Now, chairpersons of political parties are saying that some names that are being mentioned in the media as likely replacement, they do not like the names. Uh, is this not indeed trying to push the president uh, if, because he has all the powers uh, to do that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying, that um, yeah, the president has the power to do that. But I think the president is not a listening president. The president is sensitive to the concerns you know, of the people. The president is very much interested in ensuring 
that governance is smooth while at the same time maintaining uh, a level of stability in the state. You understand? And if you want to maintain stability in the state, you are not just going to exercise what I call naked power, but you must use that power in a way that will, will translate into good you know, dividends. The dividend that everybody will can go with. Uh, we are very much interested in ensuring that the system is endures. The political system must endure. And how do you ensure that it endures? You must have leaders who are also sensitive, who are responsible and responsive to, to the plight of the people. And so all the key actors, it's not very easy that we can have consensus around all the key issues. But if you pay to listen to some other actors and see what it can do uh, to, as it were, Come out with a maybe consensus candidate, so to speak. Somebody who perhaps will, will resonate, maybe have the has the credentials, maybe the integrity, you know, by you know, somebody who who maybe by partisan, uh, somebody who has who um, be fair and firm, who somebody who has a fair appreciation or very good appreciation of the dynamics of the politics of the state, somebody who knows the value and utility of elections, and somebody who will ultimately respect the sovereign will of the people and will not do anything on to undermine you know, that, that, you know, that franchise, which I consider priceless within the state. So I, I wouldn't think that they want to have the president. All it means is that the president must also fill the need. This is still the case. We understand. As long as the, the constitutional you know, provision remains unchanged, it's still within the president's capacity to do what he has to do. But in the process, how do you about appointing somebody who's going to preside in a very vital institution such as the EC without necessarily undermining the stability that the political system is enjoying for now? And that is where I think that you will also listen because he has proven that he is very sensitive to, to the concerns of the people. Yes, that's what I can say for now. Yes. To, to clarify this, you are suggesting that the president should listen to all manner of opinions, perhaps you meet all kinds of people uh, to, to pick from them uh, who should be the next uh, EC chairman, but then he should take his own decision. Yeah, it, it means it's ultimate, it's, uh, the ultimate decision rests with him, that's what we're saying. Um, and, and you may all very well somebody appoint somebody, uh, but you want to see that after the appointment to what extent uh, we, we have institutional safeguards. Does the constitutional architecture guarantee some level of autonomy, freedom, and independence, etc.? These things are all in China. But of course, we are also human beings. Sometimes there's a tendency for us to put our benefactor. You know. That is where the people think that people may decide to undermine the system and so on. And that is where they tighten up their appointment processes such that at the end of the day, the, the process will deliver the candidates who will be above board and who can actually prosecute the mandate of the EC. Uh, the person is not going to reinvent the game. We have, we have one of the finest electoral you know, systems in Africa, you understand? And, and what we need is somebody who is fair and fair, somebody who has a presence of mind to be able to assess that the action must be done, somebody who else is a somebody who has practical intelligence, as I said, somebody who understands democracy and what the actors must do within a democracy to ensure that there's stability among others. So it's it's uh, uh, it's in three within this period, uh, but all these concerns are being expressed are uh, just their towards ensuring the state will really strengthen the hand of the president in saying that look we cannot just put anybody there. We must do some sort of grateful to have you to speak to me. Um, let me uh, quickly apologize for uh, if you're straining uh, your ear to catch uh, Dr. Agri. We're sorry. Technical hitches there. Land terribly uh, bad.
we'll try and see what we can do about it to give you a better uh, quality uh, sound there. But let me quickly read to you uh, the, uh, what the constitutional uh, provision on the appointment of the uh, chairman of the Electoral Commission says. Now it says that the Republic of Ghana, that's uh, the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana, Chapter uh, 7, uh, headlined Electoral Commission. It says that there shall be an Electoral Commission which shall consist of a chairman, two deputy chairmen, and four other members. Now, the members of the Commission shall be appointed by the President under Article 70 of the Constitution. Now, let me read some of the qualifications for you. Now, it says that a person is not qualified to be appointed a member of the Electoral Commission unless he is qualified to be elected as a member of Parliament. Again, the chairman of the Electoral Commission shall have the same terms and conditions of service as a justice of the Court of Appeal. And also the two deputy chairmen of the Commission shall have the same terms and conditions of service as are applicable to a justice of the High Court. The chairman and the two deputy chairmen of the Commission shall not, while they hold office on the Commission, hold any other public office. And then the other four members of the Commission shall be paid allowances uh, such allowances as Parliament may uh, determine. And if a member is absent or dies, the Commission shall continue its work until the President, uh, acting on the advice of the Council of State, points a qualified person to fill the vacancy. So uh, those are some uh, qualifications uh, for members of the uh, Electoral Commission. And that's how we're wrapping up on the big one. But